Although Microsoft 365 is a managed service that requires little to set up for pure cloud companies, companies with an existing local environment still need to complete various checks to ensure a smooth transition. So let's go and find out what are these checks we need to do before considering moving everything into Microsoft 365 environment. So if a company needs assistance to find where to begin its transition process, it is recommended that it implement Fast Track Center benefit for Microsoft 365. Let's do a quick search about Fast Track and you will find information on how to find the fast track. So either go to the Microsoft fast track or there is a fast track for Microsoft 365 itself. All an organization need to do is sign up uh, or sign in with their work account and they can register themselves and get assistance from Microsoft to help them with this project. Fast track engineers will engage with these technical folks within an organization and help them identify their challenges help them make sure that they go through the right checklist and help them with their deployment or the migration itself. Um, and if you are working in an organization on a big deployment or a migration, I would highly encourage you to involve Fast Track. And Fast Track doesn't cost you anything to engage them. It is totally free of cost. Another consideration is network concerns. So using Microsoft 365 may increase the utilization of your organization's internet circuit. So it's important to determine if the amount of bandwidth currently available is enough to handle the estimated increase once Microsoft 365 is fully deployed while leaving at least 20% capacity to handle the busiest of days. Second checklist you will go through is cleaning up your on-prem Active Directory environment. So it is recommended that companies with a legacy environment complete a system review and clean up depending on the longevity of your Active Directory environment. This process will help ensure a successful synchronization with Microsoft 365 when either migrating completely to the cloud or setting up a hybrid environment. One of the tools these companies can use is ID Fix Directory Synchronization Error Remediation Tool. So let me quickly show you where you can find that. So you can search for ID Fix Directory Synchronization Error Remediation Tool and takes you to a GitHub page. This is where you would be able to learn more about this tool. You can go through the documentation to find out what this tool provides and how to install it and things like that. So please do make sure you go through this tool. What this tool does is it discovers and remediates identity objects and their attributes in an on-prem Active Directory environment in preparation for migration to Azure Active Directory. IDFIX is intended for the Active Directory administrators responsible for directory synchronization with Azure Active Directory. This tool provides a way to automate the cleaning process by either notifying the administrator of the errors or by fixing them automatically. The next step is to manage your transition to Microsoft 365 by using the deployment planning checklist. This is basically giving you lots of ideas and lots of planning well beforehand before you start thinking about your deployment. You can use this pre-deployment checklist which enables companies to create timelines and set goals and subtasks that will help you keep their Microsoft 365 deployments on schedule. So if your company is having difficulty in creating this planning checklist, Microsoft provides the following deployment planning checklist that you can use to get started. Then you can take these ideas and customize this template to map to your organization's business requirements. It starts with understanding your deployment goals. Okay. This is where you would sit with your internal or external stakeholders and agree on a scope and timeline and agree on a project tracking mechanism and develop success criteria and a communication. Step number two is to do an inventory on your current environment and make key deployment decisions. 
These key decisions include inventory your current environment, collect the number of user accounts, which is sign in names, email address, etc. Collect the name and size of mailboxes, which include shared mailboxes, conference rooms, etc. Collect client versions and configurations, which include browsers, operating system, office applications, mobile versions, and so on. Then it includes collecting the details on your network settings, which include DNS host, proxy and or firewall configurations or some internet connectivity decisions. Other things you can collect is you can collect information on file storage location. Are you saving these files on a file share or are you saving it on an intranet file storage? Then you can collect details about intranet sites that you plan to migrate. Other things you can collect is online meetings. Do you use any instant messaging application apart from Teams or Skype for business or any other third party tools? Are you planning to migrate that? Then you can collect information about applications that are integrated with existing systems like that include mail enabled applications, workflow, CRMs and so on. And make some key decisions like how will you create and synchronize your accounts? How will user accounts be authenticated? Will you migrate any data and how will that migration occur? Will there be any short term or long term integration with on premises system? What devices will these users be able to connect from remotely from mobile devices or just from your network? So think of all of these information and collect all these requirements and put it in a project planner. The next step is to fix potential deployment blockers. With tools and guidance from Microsoft, you can clean up your Active Directory accounts and tools. One which I showed you is the ID fix tool. Then get your data ready for migration after fixing all of these deployment blockers and then you get ready. Other tools you can use is uh, get your network ready. So make sure you update your software versions. If your Active Directory rights management services, you have that. So please make sure you prepare your environment and identify the blockers before moving into Microsoft 365. The next key decision is set up Microsoft 365 services to work with your organization. This is where you will configure your Microsoft 365 subscription, verify the domains you want to use with your subscription is working or not. Then you would configure application settings like email, instant messaging, online meetings, web collaboration, file storage, Yammer, etc. And you can optionally prepare for directory synchronization as well and then you can plan for single sign-on if you want to enable single sign-on for your users and if your organization have a service desk make sure you prepare them prepare the service desk or enable or give them right training to anticipate these sort of new calls which may come from an end user and before any migration Please test the deployment and optional migration process and tell your users about the upcoming changes and how it is going to affect them. And the last stage is rollout to your users. So this is where you will set up accounts and mailboxes. You will add users and assign license to the users in Microsoft 365 business. Optionally, you will migrate data, validate functionality, then complete the final steps. If you do happen to have a DNS, you need to migrate that DNS settings to point to Microsoft 365 and tell your users when they can start using Microsoft 365 and reconfigure client systems to connect to Microsoft 365, which include Office, Outlook, Outlook for Macs and mobile devices. Next step is to estimate your organization's bandwidth requirements to support Microsoft 365. Microsoft 365 is a managed service that is designed to work in any environment that has a valid internet connection. 
even though there is no set bandwidth requirement to operate in the cloud it's always a good practice to optimize your environment to create stability but you need to understand that microsoft 365 may increase the usage of your organization's network so it is important to determine if the amount of network bandwidth currently available is enough after you start the deployment of Microsoft 365 services. So what are the steps you need to make sure that you are going through the right checklist to find out if your organization bandwidth is enough to support your Microsoft 365 migration or deployment. The first step is to assess the number of clients that will use each internet egress. The next step is to determine which Microsoft 365 services and features will be available for the clients to use. You will likely have groups of people with different services or usage profiles. The third step what you need to do is measure the network use for a pilot group of clients and ensure the pilot clients represent the different profiles of people in the organization and the different geographic locations. The next step what you can use is you can also compare your result to the case study Microsoft conducted on its own network. You can find this case study online. And finally, use the measurements from the pilot group to extrapolate the entire organization's need and retest to validate the estimation before making any changes to your network. And these tools help organizations test and validate their upload, download and latency constraints. So let me introduce you to these tools. The first tool is Microsoft Message Analyzer. Message Analyzer is an effective tool for troubleshooting network issues. Message Analyzer captures, displays, and analyzes protocol-based messaging traffic and system messages. And Message Analyzer also lets you import, aggregate, and analyze data from logs and trace files. The second tool is Microsoft Remote Connectivity Analyzer. The Remote Connectivity Analyzer tool tests connectivity in your Exchange online environment. The third one is Microsoft 365 Support and Recovery Assistant. The Support and Recovery Assistant, which is known as SARA, this can help you automatically diagnose and fix a range of Outlook problems. After validating, then the next step you would have to ideally do is to integrate your network to Microsoft 365. When an organization integrates its network to Microsoft 365, they can achieve its best network performance. So the organization should treat its Microsoft 365 network traffic as a trusted internet service. And it bypasses much of the traditional filtering and scanning that organization plays on network traffic to non-trusted internet services. So it's basically to trust these Microsoft 365 for a smoother transitioning or access to these resources. So the steps you can take is to ensure proxy and firewall devices are configured and sized to handle the extra traffic. The extra traffic going to Microsoft 365 result in an increase of outbound proxy connections and an increase in secure traffic over TLS and SSL. If you have many shared calendars and mailboxes, you may see an increase in the number of connections from Outlook to Exchange. The next step is to identify the endpoints requirement for Microsoft 365 to function properly. Because Microsoft 365 is a software as a service application, it has a large number of URLs and IP addresses representing Microsoft 365 service front-end servers. These URLs and IP address are referred to as endpoints. They can be used by customers to identify specific network traffic that's destined for Microsoft 365. After going through these endpoint requirements, next is to create a deployment strategy to implement Microsoft 365 services. Microsoft 365 together with Azure Active Directory provides 
different avenues for companies to authenticate into its services. So let's look at different ways you can implement these services. The first and foremost is the cloud only model. This strategy has the least setup compared to any other identity strategies. All this needed is a subscription and a sign in account. The cloud only strategy is managed from a web interface from the Microsoft 365 admin center or by remotely accessing the service using PowerShell. The next strategy is to use password hash synchronization. Hashes of user passwords are synchronized from on-prem Active Directory to Azure AD. When passwords are changed or reset on-prem, the new password hashes are immediately synchronized to Azure AD so that users can always use the same password for cloud resources and on-prem resources. The third strategy is Azure AD Pass-Through Authentication. You can enable seamless single sign-on for users or domain join machines that are on your corporate network. With single sign-on enabled, users only need to enter a username to help them securely access cloud resources. Azure AD Pass-Through Authentication allows your users to sign in to both on-prem and cloud-based application using the same password. And Pass-Through Authentication help you with that. So all you have to do is install an on-prem authentication agent that retrieves the username and encrypts password from the queue. The next is Azure AD Pass-Through Authentication with seamless single sign-on. In this instance, you can combine pass-through authentication with seamless single sign-on. This way, when users are accessing application on their corporate machines inside your corporate network, they don't need to type in their passwords to sign in. The last one is federated single sign-on, this time with Active Directory Federation Services or ADFS. With federated sign-in, users sign into their Azure AD based services with their on-premises password. This service uses an intermediary server call to a web application proxy, which uses proxy DNS name to route users to their required location. While they're on their corporate network, they don't even have to enter their password. By using the federation options with ADFS, Organizations can deploy a new or existing farm with ADFS in Windows Server 2012 R2. So please do only deploy ADFS if your environment requires it. Depending on your environment, this option can be the most complex and costliest to set up. So password hash synchronization should be used for whichever authentication method your organization chooses to do because it gives you high availability and disaster recovery. It gives you on-premises outage survival because in any case, if your on-prem got any cyber attack or if it has any disaster that it is significant, because you have enabled password hash synchronization, your users can still communicate with these resources. And it also provide identity protection because one of the best ways to protect users in the cloud is to have Azure AD identity protection. So we will learn about this in detail in the coming lessons. That concludes this lesson. In the next lesson, we are gonna learn about planning your identity and authentication solution for Microsoft 365. I will see you on the next one. Until then, take care.